Once you cock it, before you move, you flip it on to safety. Welcome today, everyone, where we begin with crossbow preparations prior to a very unique hunt that you'll all be learning about very soon. This is the new, by the way, Excalibur uh, Micro. It's a 100 grain uh, uh, broadhead, or in this case, a field tip that I'm using. And uh, it in the air weighs 350 grains, which is exactly what this is set for. Well, I made one little minor adjustment to move it right a little bit because I was shooting a little bit left and the last one was absolutely dead center. Well, I'm glad that we took the time that we did because when they're like that, I know everything is working exactly the way, the way I want it to. Every good sportsman, I don't care if they're using a crossbow, a, a compound bow, a, a rifle, a shotgun with slugs, a muzzle loader, whatever, what they need to do is take the time to know exactly what their weapon is doing and exactly what they have got to do to make it do what they want it to do before they go out in the field. And I know every good sportsman tries to do exactly that because like me, I know all of you guys want to see that arrow go exactly where you want it to and you want a perfect kill and you want um, to drop just as soon as it'll drop. That's how it happens is doing this work. Now I might tell you this is a special block crossbow target too. The crossbow is shooting about 335 feet per second. I mean, that's quick. So you may got to make sure you've got one that just like this block here, it says crossbow target. They're made just for this purpose. Now, as this crossbow hunt begins, let me first give you the scoop on the who's, what's, where's, and when's of what you're all about to see. Through a good friend who leases hunting land about an hour northwest of Del Rio, Texas, I was invited to share in a hunt for completely wild, free-ranging species which are non-native to Texas. This is a pretty fancy Polaris you've got here. Thank you. Mr. Davis? Yeah, we just picked it up. Limited edition, kind of tricked out, you know? Well, I am excited about this. Sometimes referred to as exotic game species, all were either introduced by the Texas DNR or once upon a time escaped from game farms located elsewhere in the state. I've never seen any of the animals that you're talking about that uh, run wild in this part of Texas. Right. And there, uh, there's a lot of people in the country don't even know that this whole section of Texas. Oh has, yeah, there's tons down. of it. Heck yeah. This hunt goes on year round and with the license, you're entitled to an unlimited amount of non-native species. It's midday almost, so we'll go uh, see if we can't find some fresh sign and maybe set up a blind. And okay. I invited Babe down to hunt out here in Loma Alta. Uh, we have an abundance of different species of exotics. We've got a 10,000 acre ranch here that is full of Aldad, Axis, Sica, Mouflon rounds, Barbado rounds, um, just a abundance of animals to hunt. That one group of odd eds, you said there's like 20 or so in it. There's three shooters in there? Yeah, there's three billies. Now I'm here for one animal and one animal alone. A Barbary sheep, or Audad, native to North Africa and found also in a number of other countries. Audad have always been on my wish list to hunt and I'm really excited for the opportunity. Well, it's our first day of hunting. And I couldn't be more excited. Anytime you get a chance to hunt things you've never hunted before, that's exciting. The Audad sheep, from what I understand, they were planted in the northern areas of the Davis Mountains and we're kind of in the foothills down this direction and uh, they've worked their way this way. They're, you know, it's really rough country. It's uh, hot and dry, very hot and dry in the summertime. We are ready to go a new home away from home. 
The climate for the All Dad is perfect here. They thrive in, in the country, the temperatures, everything is just perfect for them. This is an area of Texas that all kinds of critters run wild. This, this is not high fenced whatsoever. I would not deny fence. But, I mean, he said we, we might see several different kind of critters here. Um, but it's, it's not just in this one area where, by Little Mile to where we're at here. Um, it's a big section of South Texas that has uh, animals like this where you can come and hunt them. Continuing now down in Texas on a crossbow hunt for Audad, a non-native species in the region that's grown in population since they were first introduced by the Texas DNR. What is the young one? Barbary sheep are typically found in the arid mountainous areas where they graze and browse on bushes and lichens. I know there's a water drop over there from that windmill that Marty told me about. They are able to obtain all their moisture from food, but if liquid water is available, they drink it and even wallow in it. To hunt the old dad, the best way we figured out how to do is get on these heavy game trails going to the water holes. Uh, about the only way you can get to them, they stay in really rough country most all day. The presence of water here on this old sheep ranch is a major attraction to these and other non-native game. Oh, there's a, something else coming back there. This was a working sheep ranch years ago. Looks like a pretty nice pig there. It's probably 90 yards out. And they have put all these windmills and water holes all across this 10,000 acre ranch and it's just, they don't, they don't raise sheep here anymore so it's just been left behind for the game and we keep them going because without the water that these windmills provide, well, there wouldn't even be any animals here. Well, we'd spent a lot of time sitting and hadn't had a shot at anything and boy, it was getting close to the end of the day. And all of us sitting off from straight away across from the One over there is looking at something. Oh, here comes another one. There's another one in behind him. Here come four real nice Audad rams. Uh, kind of on a trot, the whole bunch of them. There's four of them coming. They're coming in fast. It all happened so quick, it was kind of like a blur. I mean, they're just. All of a sudden, like apparitions, they were there and they were running right at me and then they turned and I looked and, man, they all look big to me. So I tried to square up and get in, in a situation. Well, they kept right on trotting kind of towards me, not giving me a shot, and then they turned and went to their right. The window that I was set up to shoot out of, now I didn't have a shot, so I moved over to another window, kind of looked up, Boy, I seen a big one in my scope and set the crosshairs on him. I just heard a crash. I just heard a crash. I think I just killed my first oh, dead. A lot of blood. Right. Blood here, here's blood, here's blood. Down there. Here he is. Wow. How's this? My first dog dad. He went, what, I don't know, 60, 70 yards? Handsome looking buggers. As I understand, very good to eat. Babe's all dad is a really good all dad. He's about 27 inches. Uh, you know, we consider a big trophy 30 inches plus, but that is a really good billy, mature billy that he killed. Look at how big the base is. I have a huge hand, and I can't even come close to going around that. Well, it's pretty rare for me to go after any kind of exotic species. I generally hunt the uh, major things that the rest of us generally hunt in North America. 
This is a whole unique experience when you're dealing with free-ranging animals uh, like we were down in that section of Texas. It, it's a neat experience. It's just a neat experience. Well, we better go get the Polaris here and get you out of here, big boy. It's almost like they're just used to it being hot, so hot here. Well, this is day two. We had out hunting last night and uh, shot a real nice hot head around. It was so, it was a neat adventure and something that you never see in North America unless you come down to this part of Texas and here they run wild for millions of acres. And I mean, not high fenced, I mean they run wild, wild. There's so many different kinds of critters you just don't know. That's what, it's one of the things that makes this hunt uh, so exciting. You don't know, I mean, Psycho deer could come in here. Audads could come in here too, for that matter. Well, once I get in the blind, I take a look at the inside of the situation there and, and if there's a water hole around where it is. I'll set my shooting sticks, I set the crossbow up, and I use a, a, a set of tripod Ultric shooting sticks when uh, I'm using the crossbow. So I get all that set and, and I practice it a few times to make sure the height is right and everything else. Then I grab my rangefinder. I want to get as familiar with anywhere out the 50 yards as I can and know that, okay, that bush over there is 42 yards and this one over here is 36 yards and that one there is 50 yards, etc. Because it's possible when that critter comes in, you're not going to have time to grab the range finders and do a final exact range on it and he stands there and gives you a shot. I mean, a lot of times it doesn't happen like that. I just took a... a Send free shower with the scent killer and then spray it down good and we'll spray the blind here a few times too as we sit here, which is a good point to do when you're sitting in a ground blind like this one is here and it's warm out. I mean, it's 70 some degrees today. So uh, we're going to be giving off some scent. So about every half an hour or so, we'll spray it out a little bit here and spray the blind down and just control her scent. And uh, we're in here probably two hours before the animals are going to move good. Dog dad really move good in the morning time and the evening time. It seems like the warmer weather it gets here in the summertime, the middle of the day, they bed up in the shade at most of the day. The hotter the temperatures get, they do seem to move a little more at night, but in the middle of the day, most of the time, they'll, they'll shade. The axis deer are kind of colored like a white-tailed fawn. They get big, they get big racks. And they're just gorgeous, real white throat on them. And there's our first one of the day. I know one deer. There's another deer. Another deer just walked in. One pigs, one odd heads, one mouflons. Not white tails as much as I like them. It's a crazy feeling hunting a place where you don't know what you're going to see. And if you, you don't know, even if you've hunted here a few days, this is our third day, I guess. And we've seen different critters every day that we've been here that we haven't seen before. Other than whitetail, we've seen whitetail every place, but they're not in season now. If I get a crack at another odd ad, I'm going to take them. The second Audad I had the opportunity to harvest was completely different than the first. Kind of came in and came in and came in. Just didn't give me a shot even though it was plenty close. I wanted to get that perfect shot for a perfect kill. And sometimes you just gotta be patient and take your time. So we had a lot more time to just kind of watch him and it was neat to watch him go down on his knees as he was feeding. And then you could see what those knee pads were from um, because that's something unique to the Audet. They go down with their front feet on knees and they move along on their knees as they feed.
Nice one, little Billy. And I gotta tell you, if you wanna experience some incredible hunting on absolutely free ranging wild animals, this part of Texas and, and a whole big chunk more around it has got all kinds of animals. Further west, you might run into elk even. The odd are originally native to North Africa and the state of Texas tried to plant them in, in various areas years ago and they made it. You know, the more I hunt with a crossbow, the more I really love it. I couldn't be more excited. Anytime you get a chance to hunt things you've never hunted before. I mean, that's exciting. On today's hunts, I certainly could have hunted by other means, but from a ground blind, that Excalibur was a perfect fit. And this crossbow just fits right into it. It's completely silent, so you can make a steady aim. It was truly amazing to see so many different types of free-ranging game of all kinds coming into view during this very unique Texas hunt. After watching them up close and having a rare opportunity to harvest not one, but two Audat sheep, I discovered yet another new species that captures my imagination and has found a special place in my heart. And taking them with my Excalibur not only proved lethal once again, crossbow hunting made the whole overall experience all the more fun and unique. Thanks so much to my good friends Marty and Mia Davis for giving me access to their private land lease down in Texas and for this amazing hunt. He asked for nothing in return other than for me to have a great time and share my experiences with all of you. So thank you, my friend. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, everybody, hey, good hunting.